Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter and a golf professional at Second Swing. Well, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you'll no notice that I do compress the ball very well. My dynamic loft with my 7-iron is always hovering around the low 20 degree mark. A lot of times I see people coming for a club fitting or I'm working with a, a player, instructing them, helping with their game, I see their dynamic loft being very high in the high 20s or even possibly the low 30s. And that makes it hard to generate some distance and get the ball to go a little bit further. I have also recently done some left-handed and right-handed uh, comparisons in my swing. As I know, when I swing left-handed, my dynamic loft is a lot worse than my right-handed swing because my right-handed swing is very, very grooved. A lot of times, when I am instructing a player, the first thing I like to cover, especially with beginners, is the compression pitch. So we want to learn how to compress the ball really well. So today what we're going to do is we're going to discuss how dynamic loft and how compressing the ball better influences the distance that you are able to hit your club, how it influences spin, how it influences your attack angle, and just makes it's much easier for you to hit much better ball strikes and to get the ball to go in the right direction. I'm going to start out hitting some shots and then we'll talk about some TrackMan data. So let's first begin with me hitting five shots with my standard golf swing. We'll talk about the dynamic loft on my standard golf swing. And then I will teach you how to hit the compression pitch. And then we'll take a look at what poor compression does and what really extremely good compression does to generate distance. So to begin, I hit five standard swings. We'll notice that my club speed on average was just around about 84 miles an hour. It's just a little bit slower than I normally do swing. Um, but let's take a look at that dynamic loft. I mentioned dynamic loft is very, very important, and it's a good indicator on how well you compress the ball. So if we look at the far right column, my average dynamic loft was 20 and a half degrees. Now today I'm hitting with the Srixon ZX7 iron. The stated loft on this club is around 31, 32 degrees of loft on it. We don't ever want to have our stated loft and dynamic loft to be very similar. And a lot of times I see players with dynamic lofts very close to 30 degrees. And that tells me that they do not compress the ball as well as they possibly could. If we look here, you can see with me swinging at only 84 miles an hour today. I was still carrying the ball 184 yards because I was compressing the ball and my dynamic loft was very good. We also take a look at that uh, smash factor number. So a lot of times people do, do question the smash factor number with a 7 iron when I'm hitting inside. Now that is because I really do compress the ball very, very well. And I'm also hitting it right in the middle of the club face all, all the time, which really helps to increase your efficiency right off the bat there too. So next, what I want to do is I want to attempt to hit some shots where I don't compress the ball as well. So when I don't compress the ball as well, what that means is it means at impact, I'm probably going to be more in this position here. So I'm not going to be compressing the ball as well. At impact, we really want to feel like that we have that handle ahead of the club head at impact, and that's going to reduce that dynamic loft. So, for these next five swings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit some shots where I try and feel like I don't quite compress the ball and can leave my hands a little bit behind. And then we'll take a look at that dynamic loft and see if there's any differences. So five shots with a pretty poor compression. Now this was really hard for me to do. It felt like it was very, very unnatural because I've trained myself for so long to compress the ball really well. But we did 
increase that dynamic loft by right around about six degrees. So we went from 20 and a half, which is where was, my normal swing was with the Strixon ZX7 iron, to 26.6 degrees. So essentially, I added five, six degrees of loft to that club at impact. What that's going to do is that's going to cause the ball to spin a little bit more and fly a little bit higher and launch a little bit higher. So we'll notice, and we take a look at the launch angle, we went from 16.6 to 22 degrees. Now, I was swinging a little bit slower because it's really hard for me to feel like I need, can really work on not compressing the ball as well. But what you will notice is even with less club speed, we're talking five miles an hour less club speed, the spin rate was even higher. So normally when you swing faster, the spin rate is going to be higher, but that really just shows the difference in, in dynamic loft and what happens when you do not compress the ball as well. Uh, so it's kind of interesting also taking a look at the distance. Now I was swinging five miles an hour slower, but I did lose right around about 20 yards of carry distance. And you'll notice, yeah, right around about 20 yards of carry distance and a little bit further total distance there as well. So I went from carrying the ball 184 to 163. Now, one thing I'll also bring up when you do compress the ball really well is it really does force you to turn your hips. When you turn your hips onto your left side, what that's going to do is that's going to generate more energy and get you posted up on your, on your left side, which essentially is going to generate more club speed. So I mentioned I wasn't quite swinging as fast because at impact, I felt like I was hanging back on the ball to generate some poorer dynamic loft and poorer compression. When I do turn through, what's going to happen is my hips are going to start turning through a little bit more, and it's going to generate more energy. And that's part of the reason why I was swinging faster with my normal golf swing. So if you have issues with dynamic loft, if you feel like you hit the ball fairly high, the ball spins, and you're really not maximizing as far as you possibly can hit your clubs, I'm going to teach you one trick right here, and that is called the compression pitch. So you may ask, what is the compression pitch? Well, I have switched to a 54 degree wedge, and I have also grabbed an alignment stick. You can pick out this alignment stick from Home Depot or Menards for a couple of dollars. It's not going to be very, very expensive. Uh, tool to, to utilize is probably one of the most used training aids that I use on the ground when I practice. So compression pitch. So I mentioned at impact that we want to feel like we compress the ball and feel like that club hand is a little bit ahead of the club head. That is going to cause compression. If the club, if your hand is behind your club head, notice how this, this club essentially is pointing straight towards my belly. That is in a bad position. We want to feel like at impact that we have that club head a little bit ahead of um, the, the club head behind the hands. And by adding this alignment stick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right up the, the golf shaft here. What this does is this really forces you to compress the ball. Notice how at impact, when I, when I work on doing this drill, the hands are ahead of the club. Other thing this drill really does well is it's kind of like a bonus. It really forces you to turn your hips. I mentioned turning your hips generates more speed. Because if I don't turn my hips, this thing's going to hit me in the side. And we don't want that to happen. If we turn our hips, notice how this thing doesn't hit me. It just still doesn't hit me at all. So we want to make sure that this does not hit you on the side. If it hits you on the side, that's a very good indicator that you do not compress the ball very well. So let's start out hitting some compression pitch shots just to show you the technique. OK, so we first started out with a compression pitch to show you the technique. I'm not trying to hit this thing very far. I'm trying to hit it about 40 to 50 yards at the absolute most. It'd be a great idea to maybe put out a target on the ground at about 40 or 50 yards to work on your pitching, because this will really help your short game as well. But notice when I'm doing this, I'm not swinging way back, or I'm not swinging way through. All I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the feeling of at impact where we are compressing the ball. So notice this, how this right here, this shaft, is on my left side of my body. For a left-handed golfer, it would be on your right side of your body. But at impact, we're really trying to force our, our body kind of to turn through and compress the ball. 
And speaking of dynamic loft, I mentioned this is a 54 degree Volkey wedge. Take a look at that dynamic loft. At impact, my dynamic loft was 36 degrees. So what I'm doing is I'm really compressing the ball, making sure that at impact, there's not a lot of loft on this club, and that's gonna cause the ball to go a lot further. Okay, so I hit several shots with this alignment stick. Important things to remember when you're doing this, you wanna make sure it is on your left side of your body. You don't wanna have it on the other side because that's not gonna work very well. So you wanna be on, for, for, that's for a right-handed golfer. If you're left-handed, you're gonna to wanna to have the stick on the, left, on the right side of your body. What this does is it forces that shaft to be a little bit lent forward. And then you're just gonna hit some normal kind of pitch shots. But you wanna make sure that it do this doesn't stab you right here because that will tell you that you are not compressing the ball very well. It forces you to turn your, turn your hips. One thing you can also do is you can do this without the stick as well. And just what I would remind you to do without the stick is when, you're, when you are doing it without the stick, make sure you feel like your thumbs kind of point down towards the ground and really kind of make sure you kind of turn through as well. But pitching definitely helps. The stick really, really helps, and it's such an easy and cost-effective drill that will really help to improve your compression. So finally, I am going to hit some shots now after I've worked on that drill, and I'm gonna really exaggerate my compression, and then let's take a look and see what my dynamic loft is like. And finally, we hit some shots with a really exaggerated compression, really working on reducing that dynamic loft with the seven iron. As I was doing that, I was really working hard on feeling like I was turning my hips and getting that hand in front of the club head at impact. What happened is I reduced my dynamic loft an additional three degrees from my standard golf swing. So we went from about 20 and a half to 17.7 .7 degrees. That, that's huge. I mean, if, you, if I have a player that comes in and I see that dynamic loft that is pushing 30 degrees with a seven iron, if you're able to reduce that loft into the mid-20s, the ball is definitely gonna go a lot further. And that's gonna help reduce, get that launch angle down. It's gonna help reduce that spin rate. Um, actually, it may change the spin rate depending on other variables as well. Um, one thing is, and I mean, talking about that other variable is when I was really working on compressing the ball, my attack angle actually went down. So it's kind of interesting how my attack angle went down three degrees. It went from minus 2.1 to minus 5.1. So by compressing the ball, what that did is it actually allowed me to hit down on the ball a little bit more, which was able to get a little bit more spin on the ball, which is kind of interesting there as well. But yeah, being able to compress the ball more efficiently and reducing that dynamic loft on a seven iron if you have or any iron for that matter, if you have a very high dynamic loft, is a great way for you to pick up some distance. As a little guy, I only weigh 160, 165 pounds. I'm able to keep up with those much more muscular, bigger guys that hit the ball further because I compress the ball really well. And compression has been one thing that I've worked on in my entire life. That compression pitch drill is a great option. Make sure you do it. No doubt you will hit the ball a lot further and a lot more consistent and a lot more efficient overall. You can hit some much better golf strikes if you are able to compress the ball and improve your dynamic loft. Hope you enjoyed this content. Thanks for watching. Bye.